Ah, the Dawns, man. We know a thing or two about living life on the edge. We're not selling to BlackRock or any of these old ass bankers running this world. Fucking pussies. Go ahead, try to come here and take my fucking coins, man. See what happens. Don't give up the good fight, everyone, all right? And I wonder, still I wonder. GM, or is it a GM? As you can see, the bears are out in force today. Gold dust here over on Twitter. September will be disastrous. Bitcoin, 12K. Mt. Gox distribution starting in this month. 1.5 billion Bitcoins will be liquidated onto the markets. Now, first and foremost, I think he means 1.5 billion in notional value, not 1.5 billion coins. But what we can see is the bears are out in force here as Bitcoin does take a tumble and wipes off a ton of leverage in the crypto markets. So let's explore what has happened here and what I'm looking at right about now. So here we have it, the main news story is crypto traders suffer a billion dollars in liquidations in a sharp sell-off for Bitcoin and Ether. Ether putting in a terrible performance here and we have some wicks down to 25k on exchanges like Binance and quite a lot of discrepancies between different exchanges as well. 24 hour wrecked count there on the right hand side, $1.04 billion, the majority of which are longs being liquidated. Clearly, there's a huge expectation of the ETF approval. So people are levering up into this. Thinking something is a foregone conclusion in crypto is always a bad bet to make. And when enough people are on the same side there, well, it does become a very juicy liquidation to be hunted. So this is kind of part of the course here in crypto. And to be honest with you, I'm not all that worried. Yes, we could go lower still. But if we just look at the wider picture here, halving in 2024, like the ETF approval before the halving as well, even if it is delayed, I think it's to like March of 2024 would be like the kind of final date for that. Generally, as per Rao Powell's model, the liquidity cycle is restarting. So we should have had the lows in the global liquidity levels and QE is back on the menu. And then we have things such as the next bit of news here from Ray Dalio. China is in a bit of a state, a bit of a debt restructuring going on. Evergrande crisis is now reappearing in the headlines due to the dire issues with their property markets. And I think this is getting over exacerbated. People saying, contagion across the globe now and we're going to have some huge market-wide nuke but this is obviously just how things go in the market so you get the ups and the downs everyone is too bullish to the highs and too bearish to the lows and the bears have the loudest voices in these times but reading through some of the information here brace pretty much telling you they have to restructure their debt over in china and there's going to be more qe on the horizon we also had this news coming out china orders funds and banks not to sell stocks as Ratika posted down here, Ratika orders funds not to sell their crypto. So pretty amusing stuff going on here. Then we have this Bitcoin magazine with a bit of fake news as well, potentially adding to the sell off. I'm not really sure who's selling off all their coins without doing any research into these kind of things here, as you can see by the community context sector. The initial post, Bitcoin magazine stating breaking Elon Musk's SpaceX sold its $373 million worth of Bitcoin. And as per the context in here, there is no evidence to support this tweet claim. And Wall Street Journal did not say SpaceX sold that amount of BTC. And what is hilariously funny about this as well is obviously Bitcoin takes a nosedive. But if this is a trigger for the back of that, obviously SpaceX wouldn't have sold last night. They wouldn't have caused the actual liquidation cascade and the prices to go down. 373 mil wasn't sold market order. Boom, see you later. Fuck the slippage. This would have been done in a previous quarter if this was true. And this is unfounded nonsense. Anyway, we have this, Elio Trades, BTC trade was crowded and euphoric after the BlackRock news, makes a lot of sense. So we wash out the leverage, tick, trigger all the normies, tick. And then after this, we hear that the SEC is giving ETH a check mark. All very strange indeed. I think this is a big washout here. And as Adam Cochran dives into the news here around the ETH ETF news, which I think is the biggest news out of all of this, he says, if this is accurate, this reporting on it, the SEC cannot both simultaneously argue that ETH is some new intrinsic crypto asset security that is unregistered and also a proven ETH futures ETF at the same time. So you couldn't have a futures ETF made out of an unregistered security. So if the SEC is approving a futures ETF, they're intrinsically conceding that ETH itself is not a security. And he says that is a big win. 
And as he says, it does not de facto mean all crypto assets are non-securities, but it does mean the SEC is conceding and there is a line somewhere to be had. So overall, this would be positive news on a bit of a bloodbath day across the markets. Now, I would suggest that most of the bloodbath is contained mainly to the centralized exchange coins, some of the on-chain stuff not really budging too badly. But if you take this as an opportunity, which I believe it is, we're actually wanting lower prices. Lower prices mean we can accumulate more bags for the major bull run that is ahead. And so a 20, 30, percent dip on your favorite altcoin is just going to mean bigger x's when we ride this thing back up 2024 to 2025. Now I did a tutorial on Unibot X yesterday I have been using this and it is absolutely fantastic for on-chain trading here in front of you they have the chart of the mog coin which is absolutely mogging and this seems to be accumulated by a lot of whales at this moment in time getting a lot of attention now a wallet i want to bring your attention to is this one here which supposedly is that of suzu of three hours capital or formerly three hours capital and he's been accumulating a load of Airtor protocol, which is on a bit of an up only mission. He's also been accumulating Mog coin down here as well. So potentially an OpenX exchange listing for these, maybe. He's also been accumulating dubs and transferring that to a different wallet. And if you go through this as well, a couple hours ago, he started to ape in this token here called Block Tools. And he now owns over 8% of the total supply. So if we just go down to the wallet here, 8,610 Block Tools tokens. So there's 100,000 max supply of this token. It literally just launched over on CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap after it's been out for like three or four days. What the heck does this thing do? As this really catches my attention when you have a mega whale wallet buying a sub $1 million market cap token. So there's 100,000 tools in existence. There seems to be a 6% token tax to sells, of which half goes to the liquefier contract. I think that is for like team stuff. But the remaining 50% goes to adding to the LP for this token on Uniswap. So the liquidity for this will grow over time as it is trading more. But this seems to be like the shitcoin factory. So as it says, shopping mall block tools. So if you want to add any of these utilities to your cryptocurrency, may that be a sniper bot, may that be a chat, vaults, staking contracts, votings like DAOs, token vestings, user dashboards, betting games, lotteries, aggregators, and even launch pads. Well, you can do it all by purchasing these ready to plug and play tools from these guys. So the name as it states, block tools, is adding the tools to your blockchain protocol. So if you want to add, say, let's go on staking contract here, you can see all the price points for adding these things. So you don't need to be a dev or even have a lead dev on your team if you can buy stuff through these kind of applications. So what we've seen recently is everything being simplified in crypto. And again, this could be one of those plays. And if this is the wallet of Suzu, the fact he's bought up 8% of the supply in the last two hours would scream that maybe this is worth looking at. At least I've aped a small bag here over on Unibot. As you can see, token launched, I think on the night of the 15th, it's been like three days in here. And then Suzu marks it up from roughly like $2.50 all the way up to 12 bucks there. With that order, of course, on Unibot, you can come and ape in very quickly using the functions on the buy side there. Check out my video from yesterday if you haven't seen that and don't know how to use this. This thing is an epic tool overall. We also had this from Tet Bag. So Bag, part of the low cap 2.0 on-chain on-chain index as I'm dubbing it. I think this one again is amazing for just getting more community support and more eyeballs on your project overall. It is a bot that raids over on Twitter and gets a load of eyeballs on your protocol. So Kaduna posted this to all the projects out there, legit teams and shitcoin devs. You can now add Bagbot to your Telegram group and keep your Telegram community engaged 24 seven by raiding tweets containing your ticker. If you're a holder of tokens, you can ask the dev to add the bot. If we just go to the bag coin over here, there was a sell off earlier this morning. I was tracking this. You can see these wicks down to like 12, 13 over here. This was due to a whale with over 150 Ks worth of the tokens deciding to exit, which is the reason for the sell off here, which is very interesting because we have all the data here for all on chain trades. When things happen on a centralized exchange, you don't really know what's happening, but you could track the individual wallet and then watch him drain it out and cause these wicks to a downside. So hoping for a nice recovery here for this token. Then we have OpenX doing this poll. Which coin do you want to list next? I, of course, have voted for my favorite Kuji here, but you can see Mog is second in the pecking order here. 4,000 votes and four days remaining. Again, if Suzu is acquiring the Mog token, it wouldn't be surprising if this one does 
win out. And then last but not least, the heist season two has just begun August 16th. Brand new map, brand new NFTs and utilities for this one. Super, super exciting. And you can see the price of this one hasn't really budged in the downtrend due to the fact this is a game. And I don't think the gamers really care if Bitcoin is going up, down, sideways or doing a loop de loop. And this is highly deflationary and there's loads of token sinks in season two. So current supply is 372 million. The market cap is $4.4 million. So you can see some of the on-chain shit coins are just not going to be affected by the wider market downturn. And I would suggest especially things like gambling and gaming. People don't care about the wider market conditions if they're gambling or gaming. It's really as simple as that. So I hope you enjoyed this one, folks. Drop me a comment down below and I will see you again in the next one. Have a good weekend. Peace.